people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another fantastic FNAF movie news video. As we draw closer and closer to the official release for the FNAF movie coming in just over a week on October 27th, we of course just keep getting big news after big news and that's exactly what this video is going to be talking about. We got a whole bunch of official merchandise being released for the film, brand new interviews with the cast and crew working on the movie, as well as the announcement that Markiplier unfortunately is not in the movie, but there is is a silver lining. So we got that and a whole bunch more to talk about in today's video. If you're excited for the FNAF film, scroll down, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date with all the updates regarding the movie. Let's kick this video off by taking a look at this brand new poster featuring Mike as well as Freddy. Now when I say brand new poster, you may have gotten a bit excited and then you saw this pop up in your screen and you're like, what the heck is this, Johnny Blocks? It's not the most interesting poster. It looks like Universal made this in about five minutes. But either way, it's nice to see a human character on one of the official posters because all the past posters just have the animatronics, which you know, fair, they are the most recognizable and iconic part of the film, but it would be nice to throw Mike, Abby, Vanessa, you know, Steve Raglan up on the poster, who's totally not William Afton, right guys? Moving on to merchandise, if you visited Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios as well as Blumfest, you may have seen these brand new FNAF pins. They're pretty simple buttons, each featuring one of the animatronics, Freddy, Foxy, Chica, as you can see in this photo. Also at those events, they were giving away official FNAF t-shirts featuring the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place logo. I really do hope at some point they officially release these products because I would love to have that shirt. Those buttons would also be pretty nice to have. Thankfully though, merchandise that is going to be officially released to the public are these FNAF Theater Cups. As you can see, there's going to be a whopping five cups in total, one of them featuring all the animatronics in that group photo, and then one cup for each of the main cast members, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy. This was revealed on the Cinemex TikTok page, which seems to be a Mexican theater chain, but hopefully a whole whole bunch of other chains, especially here in the States, get them. Now, usually when movies have these theater cups, as you can see, I've got Mission Impossible here as an example, they also have theater buckets to go along with your popcorn. Or I guess I should have used these. These are a bit more topical, huh? So I definitely would not be surprised if alongside these theater cups, they also release a popcorn bucket. Hopefully, as well, we can get some of those cool popcorn buckets like what we've seen with Saw and Barbie. Moving on now to an insane collaboration with the movie I was not at all expecting. We got FNAF teaming up with Insomnia Cookies to release the official Freddy Fazbear's Cookie Pizza product. Now this sweet treat, you can actually decorate yourself. You can get some of the ingredients in yourself. It's like fully customizable on their site, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, it also comes inside of this Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place box, which we've seen these boxes before, they were also given out at Blumfest at New York Comic Con, which by the way, we got a lot of exclusive details on the movie at that convention. But quite frankly, this movie news video is already completely packed full of info, so definitely stay tuned for another FNAF movie news video coming very soon. But yeah, if you have an Insomnia Cookies place near you, I definitely recommend go get this. Maybe call ahead, because as you can see from this promo, it says the cake requires 45 total minutes of baking. But not only do you get a delicious sweet treat, you also get an official FNAF movie pizza box, and that's pretty Pretty awesome. Though Insomnia Cookies is not the only attraction collaborating with FNAF, we also got Dave and Buster's collaborating with the movie. As you can see from this photo, for a limited time you can get official FNAF power cards, but they come in two designs, one of them featuring Freddy inside the ball pit, the other one having the classic group photo. But then also, every week for five weeks, you can get one card featuring one of the characters. Seems like for this first week, people are collecting Foxy, you go back the next week, you can get another character. By the way, if you're at all interested in collecting these very limited limited edition FNAF movie trading cards. Well, you got some weekly visits to Dave and Buster's to do. And while we're not going to be taking a look at any new TV spots, for today at least, we did get this official kind of behind the scenes slash interview with the cast and crew video from Universal themselves. It's a minute and a half, there's some interesting points, so let's go through it right now. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Hi, thank you for having me. This movie is basically about a guy who gets a job working at this pizzeria from the 80s that's abandoned, and once inside, madness ensues. Have you met them yet? Met who? Foxy. And then we get introduced Bonnie, to the characters. Chica. With amazing graphics, by the way. Look at those. They're really terrible. It's Matthew. I think they're doing their job. They're supposed to be eerie and terrifying. Hello? And we got we Mike exploring the Emma. The from the fan base was super high. Oh. Every department on this movie played such a crucial and important role. We got some role. behind the scenes of them they filming. Did, did studios create these puppets. And all the animatronics had such a so personality. Good. 
Chica. She looks happy, and then boom, she gets really scared. Some personalities scared. for the characters. Bonnie is the most aggressive. Bonnie's the most aggressive one. A time when Freddy should be scary or intimidating. He stands tall, the movement is slow and ominous. Sometimes it's the subsidy. We got really some more behind the scenes character. of Jim Henson. So you can see Spring There's Bonnie's so body in the back. In the movie that speaks to the fan base. This is a movie that's going to have a lot of jump scares. Of course, it's FNAF. The audiences are in for a ride. You will be blown away. Spiper. It's the ultimate popcorn movie. More behind the scenes. Look at that. There we go. Yeah, so because this was mostly an interview with the cast and crew, if you want to watch it on your own, I'll leave it linked down below. But let's go back and let's take a look at some of those new behind the scenes photos we got. So first up, this scene is in the main dining room. Off to the left, we can see Abby. Quite frankly, behind the scenes stuff like this, I absolutely love, especially with an incredible set such as the one we get in the FNAF movie. I mean, just look at this dining room. You can see the prize counter over here. This seems to be the entrance where they come in from. And I wonder what scene they're filming here. Like I said, Abby's here. I'm not seeing Mike anywhere unless this is Mike, but it doesn't quite look like that's Josh. So this is Jessica, and she plays Chica. The actual people inside of the suits moving around. And of course, because they are the actors and actresses in the suits, they know exactly how to portray the characters, what their personalities are. And I love the fact that they gave each of the characters different, you know, personalities. Is Jade. The most aggressive. Bonnie's the most aggressive. That's really interesting to me. You'd think it'd be someone like... Foxy or Freddy, but but Bonnie's interesting. So I really wonder how they're gonna handle him. So we have Kevin Foster talking about Freddy. A time when Freddy should be scary or intimidating. He stands tall, the movement is slow and ominous. Movement is slow and ominous, standing tall. I mean, that's exactly what he's like in FNAF 1. Slowly and ominously, like, lurking in the dark, in the shadows of the cameras. And then we get good old Robert Bennett here, who's the puppet build supervisor and lead designer for what seems to be the animatronics made by Jim Henson's. And in the back, like I said, you can see the different bodies for William Afton's Spring Bonnie costume. You got some cupcake props as well, some hands which seem to be... Also for the Spring Bonnie costume, the Let's Eat bib. Mainly, it's just super, super cool to see the Spring Bonnie outfit in full brightness. Because every time we see Spring Bonnie in the trailers, he's lurking again in the shadows. You can't really see his costume. I'm guessing this was filmed before the strike happened. So the fact that we can get Josh and Pipe... Sorry, Josh, this is very... Right a very unflattering frame for you. Josh <laughs> talking about the movie, Piper talking about the movie, Matthew Lillard talking about the movie is so, so cool. Now let's move on to some updated box office predictions for the movie. We talked about that in a previous FNAF movie news video, but now tickets are on sale and they've been selling very, very well. The movie is now tracking to earn 13 to $14 million from only Thursday night preview. So before the film's technically officially out on Friday, and that would beat the record for the highest grossing preview for a horror film, which was previously held by It from 2017 at 13 and a half million dollars. That's not all because for its opening weekend, FNAF is now expected to gross 41 million to $60 million and 76 million to 129 million total domestically, which would break both the previous record for the highest grossing opening weekend and domestic total for a horror film this year, which is currently being held by Scream 6 at 44 million for the weekend and 108 million uh, total domestically. So basically, to put it plain and simple, this movie is going to be smashing box office records for its categories. I did see an article the other day that The Nun 2, which is currently the highest grossing horror film of the year, just surpassed uh, 250 million at the total box office. Now, I'm not saying if the FNAF movie wasn't released on Peacock, it would have smashed that record, but it definitely could have gotten close, I feel like. But either way, these numbers are just gonna be insane. Highest grossing preview night for a horror film, highest grossing horror film for this year domestically, that's absolutely massive. And just as a reminder, tickets are available if you have not gotten them just yet and you want to see FNAF keep smashing these incredible records, go buy your tickets right now. And also keep in mind, the movie's still over a week away, so these numbers could go up, could go down. There was a report, which I was able to verify, that test screenings with audiences did receive a positive reception. A lot of people thought the film was great, actually. So if non-FNAF fans hear it, hey, even though FNAF has got like a lot of lore, this giant fan base around it, the movie is actually pretty fine for people who don't know anything about FNAF. That's just more ticket sales in the pockets of Blumhouse and Universal, which would mean more money, time, and effort put into the sequel films, again, if they happen. But finally, for today's movie news video, let's talk about Markiplier, the king of FNAF. Because Mark, as I'm sure you've seen plenty of times in the past, has kind of 
teased every now and then in videos that, wink wink, he might be in the FNAF movie. Well, he hosted a live stream the other day where he officially announced that, unfortunately, he is not going to appear in the film. I know I've been very ambiguous about it. I know I've been very mysterious about it. And it's kind of been a thing where I was hoping that there would have been, like, some schedules aligning. But I did want to say, straight up, without any qualification, I am not going to be in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And the reason he was being so vague about the whole thing is because he was trying so desperately to get time to appear in the movie, but now that it's so close to releasing, there's no way that can happen. Mark is currently directing and starring in his own movie, Iron Lung, which comes out, I believe, this year, though I could be wrong on that. Which, obviously, that is a massive passion project for Mark, and quite frankly, I'm glad he decided to stick with this film. Both the FNAF movie and Iron Lung apparently had a lot, a lot of very strict filming schedules, so I'm really glad they didn't make one film suffer over the other, just to have Mark in the FNAF movie. Scott Cawthon did leave a comment on that stream saying, if we're fortunate enough to get to work on a sequel, then hopefully we'll have another shot at getting the King of FNAF into a FNAF movie. Mark mentioned they really try to shift schedules just to get him in the film, so obviously Universal, Blumhouse, Scott want him in the movie, Mark wants to be in the movie, so I feel like because of that, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when, and hopefully again, in the sequel, we can get that cameo. So are you upset Markiplier is unfortunately not in the FNAF movie? What are your thoughts on all the other news we talked about in today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.